Goddamn months. Nothing. End of another artistic phase, eh? Well, that's how it goes sometimes. Shapes. Uh -huh. new, new, new images. You've got to think, right? Uh, I've got to think. at it again. Okay, now. Well, that does it. That just does it. Do you hear? Georgina? Georgina! This time your mother's gone too far. You may be trying to get her creepy old house declared an historic monument, but it won't work. Because I'm going to invoke the writ. Do you hear? In fact, not only am I going to invoke the writ, but I'm going to knock her goddamn house down with her in it. Were you talking to me? Oh. No 
Another exorbitant bill from your couturier? Even if it was, it would be insignificant compared to the one you got from that tasteless decorator for desecrating the apartment while I was away. Mm. I'll get out right here, Maurice. I'll see you later tonight, all right, darling? Bye-bye. Captain sends his compliments, madam, and wonders if you'd ever take another cruise again. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure you won't have one? Positive. Well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh. Mrs. Isabel Chorley requests the pleasure of the company of Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Prince at a reception for Mr. Sinclair Burke on you put that Friday down? next at 8.30. Hmm. Hmm. Well, sorry, the matter of what may or may not represent our heritage has long been one of contention. And there's no question in my mind, but that any such claim... Him? Mm-hmm. What for? None of your business. Any man you express an interest in, my dear, is my business. Oh, no. Not anymore. Your days of exclusivity are over. Now! If you must know, mm -hmm. Ronald is backing Burton's campaign for mayor. Oh, how attractive. Bribery and corruption go hand in hand to the voters. Since when have you been interested in politics? Since that unctuous creep has plans to swill from the public trough. Don't be coarse. I'm sure he'll make a very good mayor. Mm. Sinclair's very progressive. Oh, it's Sinclair, is it? How do you know he's progressive? I told you, it's none of your business. <laughs> anyway, he's a marvelous man, and you're not fit to lick his boots. But he's fit enough to lick your husband's ass, is that it? You're so obscene. I can't think why I ever married you. To bathe in the reflected glory of my talent is why, my dear. That is until your bourgeoisie caused it to shrivel up like an old man's dick. Don't be disgusting. Before we were married, you said I inspired you. I was wrong. You couldn't inspire graffiti in a public toilet. What's the hurry? We are preparing a reception tonight at the home of Mrs. Isabel Chorley, where the elite of the city will declare their support for Sinclair Burton. Now, will you stop questioning me? You're not my husband anymore. Which reminds me, you're three months late on your alimony. <laughs> Christ, George, you're married now. I don't have to do that. But you didn't when you did. Did what? Have to. You didn't when you did have to, so now you still do. Well, the point is academic, sweetness, because I don't have it. Uh, would you zip me up? Yeah. Hello, Andre. Hello, Andre. It's Georgina. Listen, Sweeney's still behind in his alimony. I want you to have him arrested. All right, I'll get it. I've got it. Call off the law. Andre, I'm so sorry. It was a terrible mistake. Sweeney has it after all. It's much easier this way, and you only have three months to go. Symbolic, of course. Of course. And that fat bloodsucker downstairs still ripping me off for 90% when I sell a painting. Adversity is good for the soul, they say. Hmm. Not what you think. I came here to collect the money that is legally mine. I just threw in the sex gratis. Free of charge. Because I love you. And because you're terrific in bed. As good as your madly attractive husband? Yes. Although, it is true that he has a much, much bigger yeah. bank balance. <laughs> 
Jones, 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 mm. why are you out to destroy me? I'm not out to destroy you. Haven't I always believed in you? Jane. When everyone else thinks you're sick of Jane, Jane, Jane. And Jane. don't I still? Jane, Jane, Jane. Jane. Now, there isn't that better. Yes. No, it's not. Come on, kiss me. You have to come. You know, sometimes, sometimes I wish we were still married. Oh, no, you don't. We're both much better off as we are. We're both healthier and happier. And we make love much more often. Now, isn't it marvelous how it all turned out? Well, if it's all so logical, how come it doesn't make any sense? It's not supposed to make sense. It's only supposed to be marvelous. See you next Friday. Marvelous. Hello. Moriarty. This is your guardian angel. It has come to our attention in heaven that recently you have been enormously generous to one of our favored sons. What do you want, sweetie? I have acquired an invitation to a party Georgina's going to in aid of this idiot Burton who's running for mayor. I thought we'd get a few extra invitations printed up, get some of the gang in, and generally lighten things up a bit for them. Get on down here and pick me up, okay? <laughs> Classiest invitations Now, we want 200 of these in an hour, or his sister can forget the judo classes, okay? Now, you know what to do with them? Right. Good man. <laughs> Why, you... Excuse me, sir, we have an emergency. We have a badly abused copy of Lady Chatterley's Lover, which is in desperate need of an ink transfusion. It's touch and go. Well, this is the Chorley residence. You met her before? No. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. This is Prince. Uh, how nice. Hello. My dear Mr. Ribby. Yes. I was so delighted when the ladies for Burton Committee asked if they might hold the reception here. There is no question in my mind, but that a candidate of your background should... Oh, Hortense, put those flowers in there. Yes. Don't you agree, Mrs. Uh, Prince? Mrs. Ronald Prince. Oh, uh -huh. yes. Your husband builds things, I believe. Well, not personally. He owns Prince Construction. They built the Chorley Auditorium. Really? You would have thought my late husband would have mentioned it, wouldn't you? <laughs> However, I always feel that once one has decided which candidate should occupy a public office, it behooves one to know, Albert, not the Wedgwood, the caterers are bringing their own. Don't you agree, Mr. Uh, oh, but, yeah, <laughs> my late husband always used to say, just open them a little wider so that people can see what's in between. <laughs> uh, you would be one of the Elmville Burtons, Mr. Uh, uh, but, uh, yes. <laughs> you would be related to Humphrey Burton. My great uncle. Oh, we never could understand why he was retired from the bench so early and resigned his position as commissioner of the Boy Scouts at the same time. My late husband always used to say that he never did quite get to the bottom of it. Are you not supposed to be laying these tables? The gentleman said he was going to get the cutlery, ma'am. Oh. Albert! Yes, madam? Albert, these two young ladies are waiting. If you don't hurry up, they'll never get laid. Well, my dear Mrs. Chorley, it's most reassuring to know that the arrangements are in such capable hands. <laughs> now, if you'll forgive me, I really must leave, but I'll see you later at the reception. Oh, are you coming to the reception? Oh, how splendid. Oh, I'm so glad you're able to attend. You really must meet the candidate, Mr. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, yes, sir. Have you met him already? Oh, such a charming young man. His great uncle, you know. What... Until this evening. Buggy! 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 Come to mommy, darling.
Pretty relaxed to me. And who might you be? Sebastian Stockwell, a humble toiler in the ranks of Mr. Burton's campaign, sent hither to oversee the installation of the practical equipment, the staging and the lighting and other theatrical devices. Oh, oh I see. Uh, well, Mr. Red, uh, I, I hope you're capable of seeing that everything proceeds according to plan. I think so, madam, yes. Incarcerated for a minor social offense, but he assures me that immediately upon his release, he will campaign strenuously on your behalf. <laughs> my dear lady, you must forgive my footwear. My valet searched everywhere for my dancing pumps, but to no avail. However, sooner than give up the chance of dancing with you, my dear. Are we acquainted, Mr. Lister? Indeed, we are, madam. In fact, I think I can say, in all modesty, that your late husband regarded me as one of his closest confidants. Oh, Senator know. and Mrs. Eugene Bandeker. Are we in town, my dear lady? I crossed the very threshold of your home. Assume. <laughs> by that divine ambiance, it was just breathtaking. I've never experienced anything like it before in my life. Neither have I. Excuse me. Yes. 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 Mr. and Mrs. Julia Rescapone. Well, I think if a man is prepared to leave all that sort of thing behind him and make a fresh start in politics, I say good luck to him. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us. <that. laughs> 
What are you doing here? I have an invitation. Oh, I'm sure you have an invitation. <laughs> Now, listen to me. My dear lady, noblesse oblige. Duty bound, I arose from my lonely, Please. desolate bed of pain. Afflicted as Please. I am by a recurring attack of berry berry. I don't know Contacted what while you I was in a missionary have, in Africa. Deep recess you call a mine. But I'm warning you. Ah, if here he you... comes now, our worthy candidate. I shall engage him in meaningful wisdom. conversation. Issues of the day, stuff like that. You stay away from him. I just want to talk don't to him, talk George. To him. I won't don't talk. Don't even go within speaking distance. Okay. Just take the free food and booze, which is what I'm assuming you came here for, <laughs> and leave, because I'm warning you. If one little thing goes wrong, oh. one tiny little thing goes wrong with this reception, you will be in more trouble than you ever dreamed existed. Mm. On y soir qui mali ponce. Get out. We're doing everything we can to help you. I'm sure with your support, we'll succeed. Sinclair, why don't we have a bite of food? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, who is that? Who is what? That fellow you were talking to. That? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Party chatter, you know how it is. A million and a half of that. Archie, you got taken to the cleaners. That's the only thing. Lovely party. Mm. Him again. <laughs> is it fast acting stuff? Man, this is lightning. <laughs> One slug of this and they're off and running. <laughs> Whoop. You mentioned to me that you thought I might be persuaded to declare your mother's house an historic monument. Yes, I thought you might be persuaded. Then I think perhaps we should discuss it privately. I know just the place. It's very private. Good. Sometime soon, I hope. Soon? How about tomorrow? <laughs> what was that? What was what? Nothing, I'm just feeling edgy, I... Don't be silly, everything's going beautifully. Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Would you hold this for me? Yes, sir. Where are you going? Uh, to the powder room. I'll be right back. How are you, Mr. Mayor? Well, you're dropping the gun a bit, aren't you? Oh, nothing to worry about. You want it? Money will buy it. No, believe me. What, are you hungry? Uh, no, no. This is Georgina's. She's just gone off for a moment. Here, I'll take it. We'll get her another one. What's this? Oh, this is good. Mm. I'll have some more. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting dressing. Very good. Very nice. Not quite Roquefort, but, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me, you, you haven't seen my ring, have you? I, uh, no, no. I've lost it. It's uh, about that size, gold. Oh, well, around here somewhere. Yes, Perhaps I can, uh, you know, I lost my ring once, you know. Of course, that was a long time ago. I, uh, oh, excuse me. Just looking for a ring. It's about it, but it's not actually mine. It belongs to. Uh, he was here just a minute ago. I was talking to him, and he suddenly disappeared. Driving the green roads. Yeah. Compliments of Mr. Prince. Mm. Cheers. Take Prince's show for a drink. One of these big, right? <laughs> right. Here, buddy. Yeah. Compliments, Mr. Fritz. Excuse me. Thank you. They belong to my late husband. 
That is, if I haven't made it clear already. Oh, and what is that? Well, it's understood, of course, that my support is predicated on your committee's failure to recognize the claims of certain buildings to historic value. My mother-in-law's house, for example. Well, it's the duty of the politician to respond to the wishes of the people. Particularly the right people. <laughs> That's my man. But I think you'd better stop the proceedings now. Oh, yes, madam, right away. <laughs> we understand each other, Burton. Oh, yes. We make a great team. And I think we're going to go places. You mark my words very soon. We're going to be off and running. <laughs> Room. I'm not feeling well. You can't go now. They're just announcing the you. Preservation Excuse me. Uh, of buildings sorry. of historical interest. Uh, also, candidate for the office of mayor, Mr. Sinclair Burt. Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy.
from the services of a good social director. You are impossible. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go and get it on? No! Would you like to dance? <laughs> Ready with the lights? Yes, I'm ready to go. Wait till I get the signal from the back, okay? Okay, sweetie. You got it. When you consider the time, the trouble, the money that went into this, how did this happen? Well, it's no fault of mine. You start to shape up, my friend, or else we'll find someone else to fill your shoes, believe me. Will you keep out of the way, please? Mr. Bernstein. Out of the doorway. Bernstein. Will you, you will kindly terminate this Saturnalia. Yes, of course, Mrs. Turner. <laughs> Get in! Home, oh, Maurice. What's the matter with you? You are drunk. I most certainly am. When I have a good time, I get drunk. And when I'm drunk, I have a good time. And tonight, I happen to have a hell of a good time because I happen to think that night was a hell of a party. Hmm, you would. You're nothing but a Philistine. When I think of how much time I've wasted trying to teach you style and taste, I could cry when I look at our apartment. I think of all that money you threw away. Look who's talking about spending money. You're an economic vampire. If money were blood, you'd need a Swiss bank to suck on. <laughs> You've obviously been overstimulated by the party and are incapable of making any sense. Oh, well, incidentally, as of this morning, all your charge accounts are cut off, <laughs> which makes the most sense since I married you. As far as you're concerned, kiddo, the party's over. Of course, if you don't like it, you can always leave. That's exactly what I'll do then. Maurice, home to mother. Which reminds me, as of tomorrow, your mother doesn't have any home. I'm going to F-O-F her. You know what that means? It's a legal expression. It means final order of foreclosure. Oh, and you can take the subway. Maurice has been told you don't take the car without my permission. <laughs> Oh! <coughs> Maurice! Uh, yes, madam? <gasps> oh! Finally it. That old broad. Think she's gonna make a fool out of me. Hello, this Prince. Yes, I do know what time it is. And if you want to stay on as my lawyer, you better get used to the fact that you're my lawyer 24 hours a day. <laughs> Don't mention it. All right, now listen. Today, we're gonna possess that house.
Sniveling coward, and I'll make you look like a Swiss cheese. Pull! Oh, oh Sweeney, what a delightful surprise! Oh. Julia, my darling, how are you? Give me a kiss. Mm. Oh. Have you eaten breakfast? I'm just about to feed the cat. I just lost my appetite, but I still have my thirst. <laughs> Remember what I told you, Sweeney? Drinking during the day, a sure sign of decadence. I'll join you. <laughs> Lovely. I cannot bear to drink alone. You told her that money was more important than love. Oh, Sweeney. I spoke from bitter experience. What do you want? Well, that's a nice, warm, friendly greeting for a devoted swain who comes bearing gifts of flowers to celebrate the end of your bondage to your awful wedded husband. Who said it was the end? But after the party last night... Last night, after the party, as you call it, you were eavesdropping on a private conversation. Car thief... Oh, now, wait a minute. I just drove you home. Your bloody chauffeur was bombed out of his skull. Thanks to you. Thanks to you, the reception was a complete disaster. Thanks to you, I was totally embarrassed. And thanks to you, Sinclair was humiliated. Oh, Sinclair was humiliated, was he? Well, at least that worked. <laughs> You're despicable. No. I don't ever want to speak to you again. Excuse me. Ah, oh, come on, George. Where's your sense of humor? Fun. No harm done. It's just a bit of fun. Fun? Is that what you call fun? You know, it boggles the imagination how I ever fell in love with you. You still love me. I do not. Will you let me go? No. See you Friday! <laughs> And I tell them that when I am the mayor of this city, the decisions will be made with that in mind. As I talk to the people who live in this great city, the businessmen, the workers, the housewives... Well, what's he doing here? And the street, well, he's keeping Big Red entertained. M -M she can't move a muscle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he looks different with his trousers on, doesn't he? <laughs> I think we've heard the last of him. This way lies truth, Sweeney, and beauty, perhaps. You know, new forms, new ideas. Be great, and I've been up all night working. Huh? What a waste. <laughs> you know, Moriarty, I'm thinking of taking a little time off. From what? Please. I know you recognize in my work for my patron, Mr. Bunny, prostitution of the basest kind. Nevertheless, to coin a phrase, it allows me to keep my head above water while the wolf is at the door. <laughs> ah, me, Moriarty. My mood is fragile, bordering on the melancholic. There are too many rats in the race. I need a little tranquility. I was thinking about going up to the cabin on my own for a couple of days. It's a small place, isn't it? Bijou. It's gonna be crowded. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, the creaking bed springs and the groaning lovers will probably interfere with your sleep. What lovers? Well, Georgina was in here earlier today and picked up the keys to the cabin. What? She has no right. She's got every right. Look, I witnessed the wedding, I witnessed the divorce, and I witnessed the dividing of the property. A part of the settlement is you share the cabin. If one is here, the other one can be there. So you're here, and she's there. Who with? I'll be a son of a bitch. Duplicity, thy name is Georgina. No, it isn't by Christ, it's bloody Burton. If she thinks getting laid by him is going to get her mother's house off the chopping block. Oh, that poor innocent child. Sure, sweetie. Is the key in the truck? Yeah. There's no gas. Did you say there was no gas? Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, Moriarty, you're in Providence. There's no bounds. Well, I wasn't going anywhere. Have you got any money? No. No. Look around you, Moriarty. It's a glorious day. Surely meant for pissing away with enjoyment. I have to go and screw the screwers. Oh, the curse of responsibility. 
I tell you. I just hope my shoulders are broad enough to bear the burden. I'll tell you one thing. This is it. This is the last time. You said that the last time. Well, I was wrong, wasn't I? It was obviously last time. It wasn't the last time. It was the next to last time. But this is the last time. Until the next time. There will be no next time. Because this is the last time. I'm going to say this is the last time. I may never be able to hold another dry martini. Oh, it's good for you. Yeah. Toughen your hands up for all the handshaking you have to do on the campaign. Here. What's this? We're going to go get some water. Water? Mm-hmm. The walk will do you good. Sure. Toughen you up for all the walking you're going to do on the campaign. It's only two miles. Two miles? Oh, come on. Oh, what a lovely day. mother's house I'm talking about. But that's only part of it. Someone has to see that these lovely old homes are not indiscriminately destroyed. I'm sure you understand that. And naturally, I know that in appealing to a man of your exceptional taste, that you above all else would realize the importance to the community of such historical... Toast. All right. Let's drink to the preservation of historic buildings. To the successful fulfillment of our campaign. Oh. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm just going to get the grapes. Grapes? Why do you need grapes? Well, for dessert. You don't need grapes. Oh. <laughs> you don't. You're big mm. silly. Oh, oh, you're tickling me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, took to the whole idea as though he thought of it himself. Isn't that beautiful? You know, he'll hang around that cabin just as long as he knows there's folks there who's going to feed him. Yeah, he will, won't you he? You bet. Kidnapped your wife. You must have the wrong number. <laughs> wrong number? <laughs> Kidnappers don't get the wrong number, dummy. <laughs> Prince? Oh, you are tiresome, Julia. Julia? You think I can't recognize one of your witless practical jokes? We have kidnapped your wife, and she will be. I've got a judgment against you. <laughs> And tomorrow, kiddo, <laughs> you're out. Killed! But it's the... That's crazy. What? Don't hang up, it's my last time. Listen, we have kidnapped your wife. And unless you hand over $100,000 by the same time tomorrow, you will never see her again. You promise? Promise? I'm not joking. I hope not. If you can prove you've got rid of her forever, I'll be happy to pay any reasonable price for your services. Now, good night and goodbye. 2,500? Book of green stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Sweeney, how nice of you to drop by. Have a beer. I don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, well. I suppose each of us has his own way to achieve the nirvana of blessed oblivion. I can't sit here all night listening to your idle chatter. I have business to conduct down at Uncle Ike's Emporium. Oh, <laughs> 
On the way, Hector. Come on. Come on, Hector. Just quit. Come on. That's it. Out of the way, Hector. Please. I just want your opinion on a simple matter. You're not handing down a Supreme Court decision. What do you say? I think we have to act upon the assumption she has indeed been abducted. Sweeney. Now, Rongo, I do feel sometimes that in the matter of your wife's uh, family, your views do tend to become a bit distorted. Oh, they do, do they? Well, let me tell you something. There is nothing more distorted than Sweeney. And I smell him in this somewhere. Well, in that case, we casually drop his name to the police as a suspicious character, hmm? Yeah. And your advice is, pay the ransom. My advice is, pay. <clears throat> Let me recapitulate. Uh, whether Georgina is in the hands of real kidnappers or whether the whole thing is an elaborate charade, financially, it's good for us. You see, you're, you're in a higher tax bracket than ever this year, and any write-off would be welcome. Indeed, this is uh, such a gift from heaven that revenue might think it's our idea. Moreover, the prospect of the um, distraught husband going to any length to rescue his wife from the hands of uh, desperados will um, compensate somewhat for the uh, adverse publicity we must expect from uh, throwing her mother on the street. Her mother. The kidnapper. I suggest a massive outbreak of publicity. It will, will flood the media with news of the tragic event, how the broken-hearted uh, husband implores the kidnappers to uh, make contact, etc., etc. And we just sit back, close our eyes, and hope the idiot behind this has the wit to respond. Right. <laughs> Get me the... Get me the police. belong to the diners club detective sergeant roscoe broom and officer kopeck we're looking for someone named sweeney official business are you sweeney no you did say sweeney 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 yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. the red door stand aside kopeck. The... yes sir the red door yes sir on the, double... on the top floor Now, don't force me to take action, Sweeney. Compact, hmm. break it in. Mm-hmm.
There's nobody there, sir. The red door? Mm-hmm. The red door on the top floor. This way, Elliot Ness. The top floor. Yes, sir. Swear, wake up. Oh. Oh, my auntie. Oh, I beg you, please don't be bitter about Big Red and me. It was the demon drink. It lashed our last, and before we knew where we were, we were where we are. And it's the heat. You. The what? The heat? No. Sweeney, your ex-wife, the present Mrs. Prince, has been kidnapped. I want to know what you know about it. Oh, a hundred thou, is it? Indeed, the gods are working their weird and wondrous ways. Indeed, Moriarty. Perhaps it would be best to meditate on this insight in silence. Whilst I make the fuzz a nice cup of tea. <laughs> mad, mad, mad. Mad, all these artists are alike. Whatever you preverts call yourselves these days. <laughs> Moriarty and myself, out of the question. Though now you come to mention it, perhaps I never have eyed the lad in the proper perspective. Moriarty, smile for me. Besides, if we're screwing each other, what in hell do you think she is? A bookend? Well, maybe she's a fag, too. You can't tell about nothing these days. You're up for a promotion, Topek. Just doing my job, sir. I call him as I see him. <laughs> All right, Sweeney. Get some clothes on. Yes, perhaps a small cocktail dress would be helpful. Officer, please accept my apologies for my behavior just now. Your news was so stunning, it sent my, my wits reeling. And I just wasn't myself there for a moment. <laughs> I shall, of course, immediately offer a thousand dollar reward for any information received. My great and good friend Moriarty will generously donate one of his exclusive objets d'art for just such a purpose. Won't you, Moriarty? You see, Inspector? <laughs> Not a word. Your work has never been so overpriced. Hands clean, heart pure. The strength of ten men flows through my veins. Whatever madman planned this job hasn't a chance. All right. Don't leave town, Sweeney. Oh. I'm not finished with you yet. Kopek! patron of the arts and wife of the millionaire president of Prince Construction. A badly shaken prince told our reporter today that a ransom of $100,000 was demanded. And in City Hall today... Mm -hmm. If you want to see your wife again in Van Tish, you will deposit $100,000 on a... a... the whole ball game. I wonder what happened to the diaper bales. Hello. What the hell brings you here? I came here to slit your throat. You. Oh, George. You. George, George. I should have thought a little romp in the backwoods with Burton would have put you in a better mood. Well, it didn't. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Tell me about it. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of telling you. 
It's enough to know that I've decided to sacrifice my entire future, my marriage, my reputation, just to help you. Wait, wait a minute. Back up a minute. I seem to have lost the thread. Help? How are you going to help me? Where is it? Where is what, George? The money. <laughs> oh, come on. I've just paid your alimony. There's another month yet before I have to try and sell my body to an experimental laboratory. No, no, the ransom, my blood money. <laughs> Your fantasies really amaze me, George. Sweeney, I'm serious. Where is it? I didn't get it. It was a good idea, but it didn't work. What do you mean, it didn't work? Well, you're back, aren't you? Yes, but the only one who knows I'm back is you. When I realized that, that that disaster at the cabin... Oh, it was a disaster, was it? Totally. Anyway, when I realized that your insane jealousy had driven you to these irrational acts, I knew at once that you were still hopelessly in love with me. I am not in love with you. Stop saying that. I merely knew that Burton had already made a deal with Prince. Oh. Oh. In that case, I'm glad he didn't get his part of the bargain. Anyway, I'd already decided to come back to you. Yeah. Yes. And then you devised this divine scheme to get us $100,000 because you knew that I'd only return if you could prove yourself worthy of supporting me. Shut up, Julia. What? You're moving your lips, but it's your mother talking. Nonsense. It's a divine idea, Sweeney. It's the best you've ever had. Was. Is no more. Are you going to risk losing me again? I must admit, I'd never viewed it in that light before. It's not as if I'm asking you to go back to the agency. <laughs> Sweeney, stop laughing. Sweeney, I'm tired of loving the wrong people because they have money. I'm starving when I'm with the people I love. George, don't you ever learn from experience? Hmm? No. No, it's... It's always new and for the first time. That's... How could I go on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please, we need the money. Mm -hmm. No, George, no. It's not spontaneous anymore. <laughs> it needs surprise. The thing I liked about it was that it came out of nowhere and I made a grab for it, like the brass ring, and I missed. Well, try again. The carousel's still going around. Uh, very probably, young lady, but who's pushing it? Me. Sweeney, I love you. Nice, man. I need the balm of a few kind words now and again. Relaxes the spirit and uncurls the toes. And contrary to what you've heard, young lady, I'm only human, you know. I know. I suppose, being human, one does need money for the essential things in life. <laughs> and the non-essential things like nourishment. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it is too good an idea to let go. Mm -hmm. Of course, fresh plans would have to be made. Mm -hmm. Different directions. <laughs> New ricochets. Retaining one's balance while knocking others off theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Georgina, this is no time to languish on the couch of passion. This is a time for action. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature in hard-favored rage, and let us send Prince an extortion note. Let us then nobble Burton before he reaches civilization and blows the whistle on us both. On, on, you noble English. Cry God for Sweeney! Take two aspirins, stay in bed, and I'll call you in the morning.
Just wait a minute. Of course she's going to be all right. Just, just wait a minute. Hmm. Egyptians used to do them like this all the time. You'll last for years. <laughs> Not bad, though I say it myself. An off-the-cuff job. I think Moriarty will be very pleased with me. No, 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 don't, don't move. <laughs> a fall from that height could put a very nasty dent in your underwear. <laughs> I'll just get washed off. He'll be as hard as a rock in a minute. What I want you to do is just cut his visible means of support, okay? And then we'll be set. For life. For life. For life. It's only a temporary inconvenience, Sinclair. Just as soon as Wallace comes across with the money, I'll call and let them know where you are. And then you can be rescued. And you can tell your whole story to the newspapers. Omitting, of course, some little soldier in the woods. Hmm. Yes, that's right. Any flight going anywhere, as long as it leaves here at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes, Hong Kong? Splendid. I have this overwhelming passion for bamboo shoots and snow peas and ginger sauce. Sweet. How many tickets? Two. Yes, a man of my distinction never travels anywhere alone. There, that's taken care of that. George, hmm? are you scheming something? Me? Mm. Why, darling, what if it made you think that? Oh, experience, habit, scar tissue. Maybe you have a guilty conscience. Impossible. Now, here's our plan. Oh, 0500 hours, Georgina in position with getaway car. 0520 hours, Prince drops money into designated garbage care. 0530 hours, diversion begins. 0531 hours, Sweeney arrives at car with cash. Terrific. Mm -hmm. There's only one problem. What's that? How does the money get from the garbage bin to Sweeney? Do you remember Houdini hanging upside down in a straitjacket over Niagara Falls? What does he have to do with it? Well, he didn't tell anybody how he did it either. <laughs> Trust me, sweetheart. Okay, now do you know what you're going to do? Yes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Good, good. Okay, I better be going. Organization is the key to success. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the ransom in the receptacle, Kopeck. Garbage bin. Hey, you be careful with that. That's real money. All right, 
you men. All in for inspection. All right, you men. Your cover looks good. Excellent disguise. Now, very important. If you want to pick up your overtime this week, have your time cards in the office by 0900 hours. Any questions? Yes, sir. What if someone thinks we're real garbage men? All right. Nobody moves until I blow the whistle. Take your position. Now, you better not let him get away. Mr. Prince, trust me. I'm in complete control of the situation. The trap is escape-proof. As soon as he sticks his hand in that basket, the net drops. Symbolically, of course. Of course. Kopech? Let me down. For me? You're not the answers I've been looking for. Uh -huh. You betrayed me. Don't even know where you are. Turned me from my true path. Made me feel like a goddamn interior decorator. Huh? Julia. Julia. 
Virginia. Sir, 52nd Division. Right. Never forget a face. All right, Kowalski, good disguise. Th thank you, sir. We were hit by a garbage <laughs> bin. Sergeant Broom! It's all, all right, right sir. Broom! It's all over Sergeant by the actual Broom. arrest. Oh. I thought as much. The old Sergeant double switcheroo. Didn't fool me for a minute. Broom. Don't worry, sir. The man is tightening. Sergeant Broom! Come, please! Sergeant Broom, come quick. It's a miracle. Yes, go back, Ricky. Get in the car! Uh, 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 after that garbage truck! Sir, the net is tight! <laughs> Wait for me, you idiot! Don't worry, sir, he doesn't stand a chance. All right, two of you in this car, Flanagan, Kowalski! Kowalski, on the double! The rest of you men! She ends up in jail for extortion. She does. And I can knock her house down. Oh, oh, come on. Good work, Kopeck. Excuse me, sir. Did you see a garbage man? Get it. Okay. Kopeck! Flanagan! Kowalski! Assemble the suspect! Yes, sir. I wish I'd seen his face. Oh, you'll see his face soon enough after he's tap danced his way out of the slammer, which, if I know Sweeney, should be in about five minutes flat. He'll be back here like a homing pigeon. Terrific. What's not so terrific is Prince saw me. So he'll be here, too. Remember the biggest you got, Giuseppe. Now, zero hour is in 30 minutes. Him, sir. Mm -hmm. Here's the wife of 12 kids. All right. Go back. All right, where's the money? Come on, fella. You know we don't get paid till Friday. Look, I'm not a garbage man. You could have fooled me. Look, I'm a police officer. Why don't you go back and blow your cover? There we go, sir. There we go. God. No! You have no right to 
Time. Listen, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it! Well, then I'll be forced to tell the truth, Ronald. And what might that be? That you and Burton arranged the kidnapping in order to wash some dirty campaign funds. Cricky. Shut up. You wouldn't. Well, I... You would. Prince? You been skiing? Certainly not. I have been forcibly detained in this ignominious position by your wife. Oh. You expect to build as much as a hamburger stand in this city? You'd better make sure that this fiasco doesn't become public knowledge. You are threatening me? <laughs> Listen, without my support, you won't get elected to the garbage department. Campaigning like that. I am not campaigning. The damn wife got me into this. She's not my wife. Then you agree to the settlement? No! Uh, legally speaking, uh... <gasps> Prince. Georgina. Prince, where did he go? He's over there. Well, take me to him. Will you stand still when I'm talking to you? Hold it to a breath. That way. Instructing a police officer in the course of his duty? Now, oh, come on. Attempting to bribe a police officer. I, I want to see my... Creating a disturbance. Inciting a riot. Indecent exposure. You'll be hearing from the police commissioner about this. Discharging a firearm within the city. <laughs> Limits. <coughs> Unlawfully operating a city-owned vehicle. Oh. Etc. Etc. 
Bless you. Kowalski, sir. Right, never forget a face. Polish, huh? Psst. Houdini. How are we gonna get out of this? Jones, Jones, Jones. Have I ever let you down before? <laughs> Sweeney, you lousy mother. What do you expect from that son of a bitch? What I expect is a public apology. Ronald. We all got arrested. You should have been arrested years ago, friend. Now, let's you. It is. 